Hello and welcome back. This is going to be an instructional video on acrylic denture tooth repair for the Complete Dentures 2 course at New York City College of Technology. This time the demonstration was done by my friend and colleague Sander Polanco and the audio is of course by me, Oscar Galvis. Let's begin. To start, let's talk about wearing the proper personal protective equipment during this project. Whenever performing an acrylic repair on a complete denture, be sure to wear goggles, face mask, and gloves. Next is to gather the materials and equipment you may need to perform the repair. Number one thing that is necessary is to have a self-cure or cold cure acrylic resin in the form of polymer, powder, and monomer liquid. These acrylics do not need to be in a controlled heated environment in order for them to cure, and they cure a lot faster than heat cure acrylics. Next, be sure to have the proper burr set, whether you're going to be using a lathe or a handpiece, depends on the kind of burrs that you want to use. When beginning the process of a repair, it's important to evaluate the tooth fracture itself. Ask yourself, why did it break? What is going to be the best practice for the repair? And what are the considerations? The Air Force Manual discusses two different categories of tooth fractures that can occur. One that has a clean D-bond where the gingiva is still intact, and another where the tooth has fractured off and some of the tooth is still in the denture base, resulting in the need to grind away the denture base. If the original denture tooth is compromised, then you must select a new denture tooth that matches the shade and mold of the one that is missing. Once the proper tooth is chosen, it will probably need to be modified in order to fit into the denture base properly. It is important to remember that the tooth and the denture base are made out of acrylic. So if adjustments to the tooth need to be made, chances are you can also make adjustments to the denture base themselves. When repairing a posterior tooth fracture, it's important to use the opposing denture to make sure that the tooth is in proper occlusion. Once the tooth is fitted into the space, you can place mechanical retention on the tooth and the denture base. This makes sure that not only do you have chemical retention, but that you also have mechanical retention. Once the denture tooth has been fitted properly into the denture base and all surfaces have been prepared, it's time to mix the acrylic. Once you have mixed the acrylic and it's reached the proper consistency, you can then begin to add acrylic to the prepared denture base. When performing a freehand technique, you will wait until the acrylic has reached its doughy stage and then press the denture tooth directly into the doughy acrylic. To remove excess and to contour acrylic, you can use a tool with wet monomer to remove excess and form root eminences. Although when using a freehand technique you do not need a matrix, an opposing occlusion is required in order to make sure that the tooth is placed properly. Without an opposing, it'd be a complete guess as far as where the tooth goes in the position of the occlusion. Once the acrylic work is complete, you can place the denture into a pressure pot that has 110 degree Fahrenheit water at 15 pounds per square inch of air pressure for 10 minutes. 
Once the repair acrylic has completely polymerized, you can remove it from the pressure pot and begin the finishing. The finishing procedures are exactly the same as finishing a complete denture straight out of processing. You can reference the denture recovery and finishing instructional video for a full demonstration. After processing this type of tooth repair, it is always important to check the position of the tooth and to check occlusion to make sure it didn't move while it was in the pressure pot. Performing this freehand technique can sometimes result in significant finishing. Be sure to redefine all the gingival margins on the buccal and lingual sides. The freehand technique is one of the fastest methods of performing a tooth repair. Given its nature, it's usually done for single teeth that have a pretty good seat in the denture base still. However, there are repairs that will require you to make use of a matrix. The matrix technique is common for a category two repair where gingival reconstruction is necessary. If a tooth has fractured off and taken some of the facial acrylic with it, all of that surface needs to be rebuilt. For an anterior maxillary tooth, this is very important and is probably better done with using a matrix. As before, the first thing you want to do is select a new tooth. It must have the proper tooth shade and mold to match the pre-existing denture teeth on the arch. The same techniques are needed when using a matrix in that the denture base surfaces and the tooth need to be modified and prepared to fit properly and receive new acrylic. When using a matrix, the tooth must be positioned in wax. Not only must the tooth be positioned properly, but the gingival anatomy needs to be waxed to proper contours as well. Think about it as almost setting teeth all over again. Once you are happy with the tooth position and gingival contours, it is now time to make use of laboratory duplicating putty. Most putties come in a base and a catalyst. Some come in putty and putty form, while others come in a putty gel form. Regardless, when using a putty mixture, you want to use one part base, one part catalyst. You're going to mix these components together until the colors are blended evenly. Once the base and catalyst are evenly mixed, you can begin to apply the laboratory putty to the repair and adjacent surfaces. Be sure to capture the incisal or occlusal surfaces depending on where the repair is. In order for the duplicating putty to seat back onto the denture when it's time to perform the acrylic work on the repair, the more surfaces captured, the better. Once you are satisfied with your application of the laboratory putty, allow proper time for it to set. Once it has solidified, you can remove the putty from the denture and cut the edges for better verification of seat back onto the denture. The next steps are similar to the freehand technique 
and are as follows. You would remove the denture tooth from the denture, clean off the wax from all surfaces, including the denture base. You will then place the tooth back into the matrix and on the denture, and then apply your acrylic accordingly. The repair would then go back into the pressure pot, and once the proper time has elapsed, the dentures recovered from the pressure pot and finished. Once the finishing and contour of the denture repair is complete, it is now time to pumice. For step-by-step -step instructions on pumicing, please reference the pumicing and polishing video for a full demonstration. Once pumicing is complete, we can then move to the last stage of high shine polishing. Once again, you can reference the pumicing and polishing video for a full demonstration on these steps. The results of a proper tooth repair are shown as no lines of demarcation, meaning you cannot tell where the old and new acrylic begin and end, no porosity in the repair acrylic, and that the tooth is still properly positioned.